Okay, welcome to Economics. This is Dr. Kling. And today I just want to review the law of diminishing returns. And <clears throat> the law of diminishing returns says that at some point you can double some key inputs but not double output. So let's say we're running a pizza delivery shop. Okay, so let's say one driver typically can deliver 10 pizzas an hour. An hour. Does that mean that if we had a hundred drivers, we could get a thousand pizzas delivered in an hour? No, probably not. Uh, we don't have the oven capacity to bake a thousand pizzas in an hour, and even if we did, <coughs> think of uh, how big an area these hundred drivers would have to cover, and just you know they'd be getting in each other's way as they come back to pick up pizzas. Um, so the point there is that the marginal product of the nth driver, the amount, the additional pizzas that the nth driver, let's say the 40th driver, can uh, sell for us, deliver for us, is less than the n minus one driver, and that's diminishing marginal returns. So the returns are not negative, although they could be negative at some point. They could just get in each other's way to the point where they're actually reducing output. So the returns are not negative, but they're declining at the margin. And we call it the law of diminishing marginal returns because we think in most circumstances we do reach a point where the next uh, input produces uh, less and less output. So if you want to graph that, we could have output and then a key input such as labor and <coughs> eventually we reach a point I'm going to put a dashed line here so here because this uh, the curvature is downward there are diminishing returns so so here we've reached a point of diminishing returns, diminishing returns, and here we've reached actually a point of negative returns, workers getting each other's way. Okay, so that's our picture. Um, <coughs> if we were to draw the marginal product curve that is associated with, with the, the thing I drew here, uh, marginal, so that's a graph of delta Q, delta L, that's marginal product over L, labor. The way I've drawn this, it's initially um, going up, but then you hit this point of diminishing returns and it goes down and then at the point of negative returns it becomes negative. So if we connect here and here. Uh, and so this is the area where the law of diminishing returns applies, where the that's where marginal product 
is declining. What that means for cost is that marginal cost is increasing when you're at the point of diminishing returns and when you go beyond that point. So if we were to draw a graph that had cost and output, <coughs> we will get a point where if this is marginal cost, marginal cost is increasing. And that starts again at the point of diminishing returns. At the point of diminishing returns to deliver more to deliver ten more pizzas now I have to get more than one driver because uh, they each driver has to drive a more a longer more complex route and so my cost of delivering pizzas starts to go up as I get to past this point of diminishing returns. So what the law of the, the bottom line for the law of diminishing returns is it implies that they're increasing marginal costs. So when you recall that when we did a natural monopoly, the natural monopoly had marginal cost that was flat and therefore average cost label the axes, cost, quantity, average cost was declining because marginal cost was flat. But the law of diminishing returns says that a natural monopoly is in fact unnatural. That in most situations you'll reach a point where in order to increase output the marginal cost goes up so that most of the time a marginal cost curve looks like this and not like this. So that's the um, law of diminishing returns.